Today's unfiltered interview is with the one and only Master of Cavalry, Pervy Sage. He's been playing Cavalry from the beginning of time of the Call of Dragons history and he's continuing on through the pain and suffering. And I'm asking him for his opinions on Cavalry in Call of Dragons and what his thoughts are with the talent system and how it could be improved in the future. So I hope you enjoyed today's Unfiltered with me, Mr. Sneaky and Pervy Sage. Right, welcome to Unfiltered and we have Pervy Sage on stage and we're going to be talking about Season T1 and Cavs. So the main question I really want to ask him and as probably the community wants to know is how are you finding Season T1 at the moment because it's the brand new season in Call of Dragons. Yeah, generally speaking, and thanks for having me, Sneak. Um, season T1, I mean, I think the game's taking steps in the right direction with some of the changes. The most notable changes, in my opinion, is the addition of seasonal talents, uh, glory points, and also the overall changes to the map. I was going to ask, yeah, go ahead. Uh, when, because you mentioned glory points, do you think glory points is like a good thing? Have you enjoyed, like the difference between glory points and merits or do you just think it's just another gimmick to add on no i think it's definitely a good step with the glory points i think it's what merits was trying to be originally but then people were kind of just gaming the merit system by uh, having duels or just killing off their own farms um which particularly pissed me off because uh i felt like it was the only thing that showcased um your PvP prowess, uh, and then if people could just imitate those numbers by gaming the system, then it kind of kind of took that away. So glory points definitely fills that hole. I think uh, I think because merits existed, it's fine to just keep them existing the way that it is. But I think glory points could uh, it could definitely take it and run with it a little bit. Um, for example, the SLE is based on merits right now. That could be, be uh, based on glory points for kill day, the kill event day. Um, glory points could have their own merit store, like their own version of that. I think um, I think what would really make sense is if they had a talent tree that was specifically based on glory points that had unlimited tiers. They don't need to make those talents too significant. It could be like a 0.1% attack increase or like something really small. Something that people could earn towards and would help them in PvP and make them want to PvP more. I think that would definitely be a nice addition to the game. That makes sense. I like what you were talking about when it comes to the glory points because I actually agree. With I like the, the change in them because it is, what, like you said, I think glory points is exactly what merits were intended to be originally but obviously we've all been farming and everyone not giving really two fucks <laughs> about it we're just farming away right so i do in uh agree with you there um i do like the suggestions the only one thing i will say from just like obviously me being the the voice of reason is like i do like the whole the what you suggested with you know maybe having some sort of system where earning glory points you're getting a reward out of it i would like the shop idea the shop idea sounds good just like in an additional store but it's the glory point store instead of the merit store and you can get like maybe more you know lucrative goods right because technically it's meant to be harder to get glory points because you're fighting enemies and you're not just farming this like merit like you would do in the merit store um but the only issue i was gonna say is when it comes to the stats, because certain <laughs> players might feel, okay, we, we enjoy having extra stats, but is that going to be just too much more, again, in the favour for pay to win? Because the problem is with the game is, you know, it's already such a pay to win heavy game that giving any more stats to people who are already spending is just going to lean it more into their favour, right? Because if the game, for example, was in a good model, right, where... I could j jump in and I might be able to play the game in a year and in a year I might achieve my T5. If that was like the actual case scenario, I think what your suggestion would be like so much more viable, you know what I mean? But I think because the current state of the game, it's not it's not quite there yet, you know? <laughs> so that is, that is totally a fair argument, actually. Now that you mention it, that, that definitely 
does kind of exasper- exasperate the, the difference between pay to win and, and yeah because it is but one I of think... them things where even the devs right it's not even like i think changes where most people think about you know you can suggest a good idea but it's like if you suggest the idea you need to really think of those pros and cons and it's kind of I'm not even faulting you. It's like you can look at the devs, right? The devs have done it plenty of times in the past where they've implemented changes and everyone's question marked and they're like, why are you doing this? And they've reverted them back, right? So True. it is one of those yeah. cool, interesting moments. Um, the next question that I do want to lead into, because um, we were talking about seasonal talents and stuff, is because it is obviously in this new talent system we've got. I have my own opinions on it, but... As you know, there is the cavalry stuff, and I'm guessing as a main cav player, you're going to be quite upset because there probably isn't like any sort of like elk rider talents, and maybe even the talents that you get are technically pretty good for cav, but maybe they are just a little bit linear in the play style. So I'd just like to hear your thoughts on them. Yeah, that's that's a great question. I have a mixed response for you, so I'm not happy or sad about it because I think I think the overall additions to melee calves are really really good. They make them a lot better at what they were already good at. Um, so that was nice to see because I think calves overall need a buff. The fact that elk riders got missed completely. Um, obviously not too pleased about that. <laughs> I, I, I actually believe it was unintentional. I think the yeah. Cavs added seasonal talents. Um, they literally gave one to every uh, class of Legion type. They just didn't give one specifically to Elks. You could argue that the Elks get like some of the bonus from ranged um, and some of the ones from melee, uh, but they're always the lower tier ones. But, you know, if you look at the name of the seasonal talents, that in itself is in- interesting. It could it could be that seasonal talents change every season, and it might just be that, you know, one Legion type just gets left out or nerfed a bit each season. It's definitely something the devs can play with and change in the future, so I wouldn't bank on it staying the way that it is forever. Um, so that's, a, that's an interesting way to look at it for sure as well, too. And then that way... Um, it gives every Legion type a chance to shine each season. Um, but yeah, I think they just overlooked the Elk Riders. Um, it's at the point where Elk Riders, they were barely viable in the first place. I think they're like completely unviable now uh, because now they can't even kite uh, other calves in infantry because of the buff they both receive to their air skills. But yeah. Yeah, I was going to mention that, uh, but it is true what you say, and the thing is with the talents is, you know, the current system we have is what I would call like the, the introduction system, and that, I kind of see exactly what you're saying. I think it was not intentional for them to miss the elk riders, right? I think for them, they were trying to just bring out this new talent system with some really good, like, basic, like ideas right which aren't too complicated on paper but they go look these are like some talents that you can take that are gonna emphasize a different play style and maybe in the next season and this is one search that i put out and i hope they, they follow through with it is like they make it instead of having you know like we've got the battlefield domination and the accuracy and all of these weird ones i'd rather just make it so instead of having four talents you have like five talents because then it'd make a little bit more sense for them when it comes to troops because you could have one talent tree specific for infantry right and you could play for a more offensive or defensive style and then you could have the cavalry tree where you could tailor it so the elk riders are stronger or do you rather go for you know your melee ones which technically empower spring wardens eagles right so you're still having a trade-off and it's cool that you're powering each single unit and obviously the f- fifth tree for me would be kind of what you suggested in being like a almost like a universal you know jack of all trades tree where it's kind of be you know the first one is like cp recovery or merit gain you know the next one could be to do with gathering or like turret you know destruction you know what i'm saying just like generalization like not troop specific but you know 
PvP specific, let's just say that. So I do like the point, what you've said, though, and uh, hopefully the devs listen and take it on board because it is, <laughs> is sad to see the, the poor elk riders, obviously, not having any love. But that kind of transitions into the next question, which is going to be, like, your opinion on Cavs right now because, obviously, everyone should know, and if you don't know Pervy Sage's channel and not know him, Pervy Sage at all, he is the infamous main Cav guy, he is being known and to abuse people, even on Facebook, creating, <laughs> you know, posts about him farm killing them because they were farming in a war zone. He is that guy, right? He's played Cavs since day one. So it's really good to hear your insights on it. So what are your thoughts on Cavs currently? Yeah, absolutely. So the other, the other side of my response, basically, and to elaborate on the previous question too, is I think melee calves uh, perfectly fill the role that they're meant to fill now. So for a quick ambush, getting in and out, they're, they're better than they were ever before at that. They don't get interrupted by other legions. Um, they're moving super quick. The range of their charges is, is far. Uh, they take 20% less damage on their way to the target. So basically, it makes them so much better at at the role that they were meant for, which is not at the front lines, but kind of in the back lines, cutting up marches that are heading maybe to a, to the murder ball. Um, and so I think with these changes, they're actually going to become uh, a bit of a meta um, in at least the skirmishes and open battle uh, fights. Not so much in choke choke battles, which is where fights eventually end up. But Actually, that makes me want to touch on another point, another change about uh, Season T1 yeah. is the map itself. The fact that they've spaced out the spires and they've put objectives kind of equally between each spire, it leaves actually a, a good chunk of time in battle um, is fought outside of choke points now. So I think that change is really good. And then having the spires um, on the original map the good thing about that is it doesn't allow teams to just get completely steamrolled right off the bat. I think those changes were good. I think the changes to Cavs are good. Um, I think there's a lot of potential with glory points, with kind of everything that they've introduced this season. So overall, I'm I'm actually really excited about everything. And um, I know next season, personally, unless the seasonal uh, talents change and kind of help Elk Riders out, I'll be doing a faction change and definitely going to be pumping out a lot of PvP content. Nice, dude. Yeah, no, nice to hear because it is one of those where I think a lot of players are probably wondering, you know, should they be using Cavs right now? And I think as the most players will say no, right? Most players will say just don't bother with them because it's one of those units that, to be honest, is really hard to play because it is, like you said, you need to have the play style realistically now to be the guy that kind of cuts off the supply line, you know, the troops that are kind of traveling very far distances just to get back into the fight. That's kind of what you're trying to pick apart. And you only get those wars realistically in the early stages, right, of, of the zones until, you, like you say, you get to that inevitable choke point where the spies are and it becomes like a lockdown zone. And then the calves fade out, you know, and it is kind of sad to see them, but obviously it makes sense because they just aren't able to A, take damage, B, deal really damage, and C, like, even flank because a lot of the choke points are generally, like, dictated about, like, mountains and just, like, weird terrain, right? So it's not even just, like, a ramp that you could potentially just blink over and get on top of. It's, it's this right. weird, like, T1 terrain. Um, I do want to kind of just mention and add on about maybe your thoughts on Spires because my personal opinion on Spires is I do enjoy them. I think they're great um, to the game. But the, my personal thing is I feel like when you look at the map itself, there's just too many Spires because like mm. it's cool to have a protective Spire, you know, for your zone. Even like, and I suggested why not just have the Spires... Maybe, you know, just as soon as you come out of your pass, you can capture a spire. Because that's kind of like your defensive structure you're supposed to be falling back on. And you could be fighting between that and a pass, right? 
and then maybe you place one spire or two spires tops in the center because when you normally look at it right now there's like four or five spires in the center of the map and that's all choke points and that's not including when you go to the other zones with all the spires there too so i think like what i would like to see and, I'm, and probably you'd agree as a cav guy maybe just like if they cut down a little bit of the spires you might actually see more calves getting played in the open field yeah actually see that's that that's a tough one i'm very biased on this i i would want to say take all the spires off and uh, <laughs> that way i can i can just roam um but like looking at it i i I, as a Cav player, I'm doing just fine with, with like the spacing of the spires that exist. And I could tell if they made them a little bit wider, or if they make them too much wider, um, it's going to get pretty tough for mages and archers in general. So, I don't know. I, I do think there could be less spires. I think you're right on that. Or maybe they could just increase the overall size of the map and keep the number of spires that they have. Um, that would be an interesting idea as well, too. But I know people don't like marching super far either, so <laughs> it's a uh, it's definitely one of those things that's a delicate balance. And I know you know they're obviously actively working on it. They're listening to feedback on the maps. They came back to the, to Maris, which was nice. Um, but yeah, I, I think you're right. I think they could probably, especially in the last Dragon Zone, they could probably reduce the number of spires for sure. I agree on that. Nice, man. So let's just finish up on this last little thing I want to talk about, um, and then we'll end up on the unfiltered episode of Percy Sage, and that is simply, obviously, we've seen, or you might have seen, the announcements of the future of God of Dragons and stuff, and obviously we know there's going to be a new faction supposedly coming for us to play. So what would you personally like to see as that faction because obviously as a calf boy you would like to see maybe a different calf unit that you might be switching to so maybe it has a unique gimmick or something that you would like yeah that's a great question i i, I saw that video as soon as it came out and that was the first thing my mind went to i was thinking like ooh, if the calves have like something unique about their unit type it'll just be so cool to see um if there could be like another strategic switch up that'll be available to me but um i think it might be greedy uh of me to to hope that it'll be a, a, a difference in the cav units since we already have the elk riders and the melee calves uh differing yeah. it might you know it might end up being something for infantry mages or archer but who knows um you know there's so many possibilities it's definitely got everyone excited i'm excited and so this That's is gonna be with the <laughs> this is gonna be like the final um, hot take question to end of the video. And obviously, everyone who's watched the video, if you've enjoyed it so far, put in the comments below your answer to the same question. You can just put hot topic and then just put your answer so we know what you're talking about. But the next generational heroes of Cav, would you think a AOE Cav would be busted? Yes or no? <laughs> AoE cap. My concern is the damage is not going to be there, but given that it's a G three hero, I think uh, I think there's no way they're going to skimp out on the damage that it deals. Um, I think it would be busted. I think it would be busted, and uh, I think it's going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you heard it here first, folks. So if you want to answer that question, simply put it in the comments below. Again. If you think the next generational free hero might have AoE on the calf, and if you think it'll be busted or not, you heard Pervy say it could be busted if it works. But with all of that, thank you for your time, Pervy, and I will catch you in a bit, dude. Hello, and that was it. Unfiltered with Pervy Sage, and honestly, really good talk and points from Pervy there, always giving you that actual mindset from a cavalry player because he is one of those guys that have constantly played cavalry even in the pain and suffering which is very surprising so it's like i like to see the dedication of him and if you enjoyed the interview and you want to see more interviews like this you know what to do smash a like comment and subscribe we're going to try and do this on a weekly basis and obviously give different points of views from different people in the community so you again and the devs hopefully can maybe get a different insight and a different perspective of Call of Dragons. So, 
with all of that, stay safe, stay sneaky, peace out.